Hello and uh, welcome to Walter Doodles. Um, I want to thank you for checking out my channel, Walter Doodles Art, and my name is Walter Sprague. Um, if you have followed me, you've seen me do some Sumi ink brush painting, and I'm going to be doing something a little different today, and I'll probably be doing more of these pretty soon, but I'm actually going to analyze uh, a pen, review a pen for you. I've been looking forward to doing this. I've had this pen for a little while. I've not used it yet. I have checked it out and it looks really interesting. Um, I got introduced to a video channel called Peter Draws oh, a few years ago. It's worth checking out. The guy is an amazing artist and I hope you will look him up Check him out because he is worth watching. A uh, young man in uh, North Carolina, I believe, and he does a lot of doodling with all kinds of pens, mostly. He does a lot of painting and uh, some drawings and stuff with pencil as well, but most of his stuff is pen, uh, doing a, a, a doodle in a pen. And what I'm going to be doing it on is this. It's a piece of parchment, 100% cotton parchment. And this is the pen. I got it a couple months ago. Uh, very nice pen. If you'll notice that box is really heavily, you know, doodled on. He actually did the drawing that's on that. And he's a very talented, talented artist. So I'm, I'm glad I was able to do this. This is actually his second edition of his pen. It is put out by Narwhal and it is called the Peter Pen. Now most of the time I, I love fountain pens. It's one of the reasons I started watching him is because he did art with fountain pens and I'd never thought about actually doing that until I watched him and I really enjoy the process. This pen, unlike this one, this is a Lamy Safari. It's actually my favorite pen. Uh, it has a, a, a piston inside of it, and that's how you fill it up. And I'm going to be showing you that in just a little bit. This also has a piston, but this piston comes out of the actual body of the pen, or the nib of the pen. Then when you dip the pen, the nib, in ink, you can use the piston, and it'll suck up. Um, I don't know if you can see that or not. The piston is moving. It'll suck up ink inside there. And that is as much ink as you can use. Now, that actually goes a long way. Peter's pen is a little different. If you'll notice, when you open it up, first of all, there is a little narwhal. It's a user guide. It tells you how you use it. Narwhal's an interesting company because they often will put the piston as part of the body of the pen. Here again is a little card. That is the drawing without the Peter draws across it. That was on the box lid. And there's his signature. Peter Degladish is actually his name. Um, and here's the pen inside the box. There's a little wrench here. I'm not going to be getting into that. That's so you can take the pen apart when you want to clean it. Now, like I say, I've, I've actually looked at this pen a little bit. I just have never used it. So I'm looking forward to doing this. Um, and there you have the Peter pen. It's what they call a demonstrator pen. It has a clear body, except that it's got quite a bit of design on it in the plastic, the acrylic that it's made of. And you see this ring right here at the bottom of the pen. That's where it separates out. And once you dip the nib, I think this is a medium nib that I got here. Once you dip that nib in the ink, then you turn this all the way counterclockwise and it pushes the piston all the way down. And then when you turn it clockwise, I don't know if you can see that, but it pulls the piston up. It's a little harder to see on this than it is on the actual piston converter I have on the other pen. 
Now, being it's a Peter pen, I thought I might use the, the ink that he uses a lot. I think it's his favorite ink, and I appreciate this ink, which is called Platinum Carbon Ink. It's a black ink. It dries very fast. But there's also a problem with that. Once in a while, I'll forget to cap a pen, and I'll have this ink in there. And so then it dries right here at the filler, and it takes a little while to clean that all out so that it'll write again in a good way. And I really didn't want to do that with uh, this pen. I wanted to make sure that I had time, that if I forget to put the cap on when I'm done with it, that um, it'll, it'll be okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be using this ink. It's by Noodlers, which is a nice company. I've got several inks of theirs. I've got a couple of their pens, uh, the Noodler Ahab. Good, good pens. This is called Bernaki Black. It is one of my favorite inks. And so I'll be showing you how I fill this up in just a minute. But anyway, there we have it. The Peter Pen on Noodler's Ink with... Um, a piece of 100% cotton parchment or paper and uh, looking forward to it. So I'm going to go get me a cup of coffee, reset up my cameras for the drawing, and we're going to get down to it. So I look forward to uh, seeing you back here in just a second. So here I am. I'm going to be filling the pen up with the Noodler's Bernaki Black Ink. The Peter Pen, you have to unscrew the back of the pen, uh, get it loose. And you can see there that the piston goes up and down as you screw it. If you screw it counterclockwise, uh, that pushes the piston all the way down to the filler mechanism itself. And then as you screw it clockwise, it draws the piston up, pulls ink up. Now I'm going to do this twice. I always um, do that twice and you can see I'm kind of struggling with my grip uh, still have uh, problems with my left hand after the surgery hopefully I'll be getting a brace on it pretty soon and get rid of this hard cast it's almost impossible to do stuff anyway there I filled it up once and I looked at it it wasn't quite filled all the way so I went ahead and with the pen in the ink I pushed all the ink back out, and then filled it again. And that did pretty good. Something, and you'll notice here, uh, I have a splotch of ink that got on my cutting mat up there, right about where my little finger was uh, on my left hand. And I didn't see it until I had put down the piece of paper. And you're going to see that as I... Um, start drawing and then I had to grab a new sheet of paper because I, I wanted a clean piece. Here I am wiping off the excess ink out of the filler area and the nib. Um, I'm going to test it out just quickly. Nice line. It just gives ink real good. If I hold it there I notice that the ink really flowed out and it feathered. So this is a very generous nib with the ink. It lets it really flow nicely. Just a little excess ink I needed to clean up. Uh, one of the things I loved about this pen, the cap, when you put it on the end, you didn't really have to press that much. It posts nicely. That makes the pen a little longer, and I like longer pens. Cap never came off, never gave me trouble. I have other um, pens that the cap will often... Uh, fall off as I'm running it. Now here you'll see that dark splotch of ink all of a sudden appeared on the page. Didn't like that right there. And uh, I didn't want to just start this drawing with that. Even though I've done that before, I'll just incorporate it into the drawing. But I wanted a pristine piece of paper. So we're ready to draw. And now we're going to get to it. So, starting the drawing, new sheet of paper. I'm speeding this up 20 times. Um, we have a total of less than 24 minutes that's going to be in on this video 
from start to finish but the total time of drawing that I had in the video was a little over four hours so I didn't want to subject you to that so I'm speeding it up considerably. Now I don't have any specific idea when I start drawing. I just kind of go and see where things are going to lead. Um, I do know that uh, one of the things I might have in mind at the beginning is how much curves am I going to do, how many straight lines, you know, as far as percentages go, but I didn't have that in my mind here. I ended up doing a lot of uh, curves, a lot of circles. I like circles. I'll do a lot of circles very often. Some straight lines, and uh, on some of them I will use the... Um, straight edge others I'll just try to freehand it they obviously aren't going to come out as straight but uh, you know just whatever was kind of in what my uh, heart at the time here I'm doing some stippling um, this can be a problem I've stippled before I used to kind of just go random and just hit it and hit it and hit it and I'd get little dots that touched each other and they almost came out looking like lines I don't like that look. I prefer more laid out where they don't touch. And as such, you have a tendency to put a few dots here and there. I do work in small areas. I don't try to do the whole area at once with the stippling, but I'll put them separated kind of at random and then fill in, but I actually take my time to make sure I'm not touching dots. Now, when I start getting where I want the stippling to be darker uh, yeah it may touch here and there and that's okay especially as I got down to that black filled area and there it was just a lot of lines almost but when it comes to the stippling I do slow that part of the process down very much I like to have a little more control I like to have some areas in between the individual dots um, Anyway, uh, I did a little bit more stippling there, and uh, then uh, this drawing really became more apparent as I was going on that there was going to be circles all over the place, and as a result, I don't know, there's probably a hundred circles in this drawing once it's done. I know that this is where my main idea started coming into focus. I always know if I'm going to put some kind of a body part in there, a face, a mouth, a nose, whatever. In this instance, I wanted an eyeball, and I kind of knew that going in, but that's about the only thing I really knew going in. It was at this point I also decided that I was going to have a lot of lines that were curved and a lot of lines that were straight, so it's a good mix. I also realized at this time um, I was going to be doing a lot of filling in of areas black, totally black, that was going to also be on the bottom and at the top, although there are some areas that I was going to be filling in black, most of it it was going to be where there was just either line drawings or they were going to be left white. But I realized I wanted this bottom heaviness with the black. So that's what I did eventually. And here you see that I'm actually blacking in an area right off the bat. This is one place where this pen's generous amount of ink that it would let flow. Now it is a medium nib, so it is going to be a little more generous than a fine nib. Um, but you see the black, it fills in very nicely. I did have a little trouble with this nib when it came to this type of stuff and I'm not entirely sure if it was the paper's fault, my fault, the nib's fault, but whatever it was there was times when the iridium point, uh, there's a ball on the end of the nib made out of iridium if I rotated that left or right just ever so slightly from perpendicular to the paper it felt like I was just scratching on the paper and there was no ink flow happening that happened about four or five times I try to keep the nib perpendicular with the paper so it could have been my fault uh, it could have been the paper too
And I think I'm going to hold off on judgment about that with the pen itself. Um, it could have been the paper. I'm going to try this again someday with um, a different ink and maybe on Bristol board or one of my uh, sketch pads where it's a little bit tougher paper than what I had here with this 100% cotton parchment paper. I noticed that uh, occasionally, this happened a couple times, I got fibers of the paper stuck in the split of the nib. That happens with the best of pens, especially when I'm cleaning them after I fill them up. Sometimes paper towel gets stuck in there. And there have been occasions where it's really happened bad and I've had to get tweezers and a magnifying glass because those fibers can really get in the way of a nice clean line or any line at all. They can actually block the ink flow. So that's something that uh, I'm always looking at when I'm doing a drawing like this. The other thing about parchment paper like this, it's thin. Um, you you can't see through it, but the ink flows through it really readily. I, when I got done with this and I turned it over, wherever it was black on the front of the page, it was black on the back of the page. I have a couple sketchbooks where that also is the case. Um, and, and that's really where it's annoying because then that means you're going flipping through a sketchbook and you can only draw on one side of the page if it blacks through on the other. Of course, when I'm blacking through like this, you almost need Bristol board for it not to show through. And I do tend to do a lot of black. It's just one of those things that, in my opinion, looks extraordinary. I love black. I love black and white. Um, a little bit about the drawing so far you notice I'm putting in a lot of circles a lot of lines a lot of curves it just became a mishmash one of the things I also noticed with this drawing is even though I used an ink that really doesn't dry super fast I didn't have any smudging problems sometimes when I'm doing some of this stuff the ink doesn't dry real quickly and your hand will touch a part that was uh, still wet and you smudge it. I've learned to kind of embrace the smudge, but I didn't have to do that here. I love it when I make mistakes because then I take those mistakes and I try to incorporate them into the drawing as a whole. And when it works, I love it. A little bit more about the Peter Pen. Uh, it's a thick pen, big round. Uh, it, it feels a lot like another pen I have called the Jinhao X450. That was another pen I just absolutely adore using for drawing. I don't like to carry it out with me when I'm taking notes or having to uh, identify photos that I take for the newspaper because it's just almost too big and too heavy in the pocket. And this one, I probably am going to have the same opinion of. It's too big for that. But for drawing at home, I loved it. Uh, I love the feel of the acrylic. It didn't slip and slide in my hand too much. That is important. I have a couple that do that. And I also have pens that the cap won't post on the end of the pen very well, so it ends up being real short. Um, I don't like that feel. This one isn't super light. Overall, I thought that the weight of the pen was good. I love that how well the cap posted. It didn't once come off on me, and I really like that. And you didn't have to, you know, press it down real hard. I actually uh, broke a cap once because I pressed it too hard on the body, the back of the pen, and it cracked the cap. I don't have to do that with this one. You just have to barely put it on there, and it is seated. It's not going anywhere. That is one of my favorite things about a pen, plus the weight. Too light of a pen, I don't feel like I have any kind of control, and I hate that feeling as well. The nib, uh, other than that one issue, if you rolled it over, it worked very well. Good ink flow. Um, I liked the pen, the way it looked. I liked the way it felt. 
Uh, overall, I really did do think that this is a good pen. It was about a $50 pen when it was all said and done, maybe a little bit more with the shipping and handling. Uh, it came from Jet Pens, and it is a Narwhal pen. So I didn't mind paying this much, because I'm sure that that helps Peter Degladish uh, out, and uh, I am more than happy to do that, because I really think he is one of the most amazing artists. In fact, I am going to be leaving a link to his website, peterdraws.com, and to his YouTube page, where you can watch, oh, I don't know, hundreds of videos. And he does more than just pen and ink. He also paints. He does. He did some paper sculpture type things for a design class he was in. He just does all types of stuff. And he's also very funny, very young. Really enjoy his sight. I've always enjoyed his art. It's more intricate than this. And that's his style. But he's been doing this modern doodling type of art a uh, lot better than this. Uh, but he's been doing it for years. And I really uh, hope you go and you check him out. I recommend this pen. It's a fun pen. It looks good. It's gonna. I'm going to keep it in its box and empty it out and clean it up when I'm not using it. But I plan on drawing with this. And um, I just can't say enough about it. Uh, I'm not really sure it's worth $50 for everybody. And there are a lot cheaper pens out there that work very well. But for me, I was happy to go ahead and get this pen. I now have something that has the Peter Draws I, uh, name on it. And that's something I've always wanted. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give a like. Uh, subscribe. Share this video if you would. I really would love to be able to start getting quite a few hits on this and that would be much appreciated. And more important than almost any of that stuff, I would really love to have some comments. I'd like to know what you would like to have me draw on next. Uh, do you want to see a painting? So please leave a comment. Um, until then, good. and God bless. Love you. Thank you so much for watching my video. Bye. No, you hang up. You hang up first.